Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video in the Twitter application series. It's kind of hard to believe that we've already went through 12 videos inside of this entire tutorial. And today we're going to shoot episode 13. It definitely feels like a journey. So congratulations to all of you guys that have made it up to this point. Uh, with that being said, let's get started with exactly what we want to build for today's video. So on the right side, we have the application that looks like this. And uh, at the very bottom, we're kind of missing the tweets that belong to this entire feed. We have these two objects right here, but these are being constructed manually. And what we want to do is instead of just fetching the users from this URL, we also want to fetch now this tweets object right here, which contains an array of tweets. And each one of these tweets is uh, constructed by a user and also a message right here. So you see where it says, when the mob and the press and the whole world tell you to move, blah, 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 all that uh, tweet, that tweet object will be rendered out like this right here. So we have the users up here and then these tweet objects on the bottom section. And so you see when the mob and the press and the whole world, that message is up here. And then at the very bottom of our tweets array, we have Iron Man down here and a message, he says, keep calm and call Jarvis. And so that last message occurs or is being rendered at this very last row in the bottom section. So let's get started by moving the Chrome browser sort of out of the way. And basically today I'm gonna to show you guys how to render out or how to parse out the rest of the home feed by including the tweets uh, JSON object. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do it somewhat messy in the first try. And I'll show you guys how to refactor the code to make it a lot cleaner. So. Let's look at home data source controller right here. And this is where we are going to start with the home feed, which is right here, fetch home feed. And I want to first remove all of these print statements and that comment as well. The reason why I'm doing this is to kind of keep the console a little bit cleaner. Now let's command click into fetch home feed, remove this print statement. Uh, why don't we remove that as well? And also the print of the two. So let's run that and see what our app kind of renders for us. Get rid of these breakpoints as well. So here we go, the app is up, and then the console down here is now completely clean, which is a good place to kind of start. Okay, remember fetch home feed uh, does this JSON call from uh, for Twitter slash home, and then what's being kind of returned to us is this home data source object, and then the initializer with this JSON object is kind of what constructs all of these user array or users in the top section of the collection view. That's what we see. And that's being fetched from, let's see, this top user object here. And so we will do exactly the same thing to render out the tweets, okay? So move that out of the way. And this user guy right here, let me just access the tweets section of the home feed with perhaps a tweet JSON array equals JSON bracket tweets right there and just say array and now i can loop through this guy with perhaps for tweet json in tweets json array and do that and perhaps print out what is exactly inside of tweet json so do, 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 i'm waiting for this guy to show up unwrap this guy unsafely and try to run this app so this is probably not the best practice but we're going to do this for now and perhaps i'll show you how to fix this unsafe un, uh, unwrapping a little bit later. So printing this tweet JSON object gives us this whole blob right here, which is user right here, and then the message is right here. Uh, to make it a little bit cleaner, I'll introduce a break, and that will just pretty much uh, only print out the first tweet inside of the console. So the break pretty much jumps out of the for loop when it is uh, hit for the very first time which means I only get one tweet down here. Makes it a little bit easier to read while I'm kind of trying to show you guys how to parse out the JSON. So here we go. What do we want out of this tweet JSON object? Well, we want to do two things. We want the user object and then we also want the message object. So the way we're going to do this is inside of this loop somehow, we're going to create a, a tweet object, right? So let tweet equals some kind of tweet object, which is that with the constructor of user and message. Remember, tweet looks like this, user and message. So that's kind of what we need at the very end. 
let's comment that out for now. And uh, let's see, what can we do in here? Well, how do we access access this user object? Uh, it's pretty simple. If you just do perhaps let user JSON equals uh, this tweet JSON there, and let's access the user guy like that. And then we get back a JSON object is what we get back from this, uh, this call. And so we would need to construct this JSON or this user guy from this JSON object. And remember we did that up here. So why don't I copy all this code and paste that down here. So there we go. Now we have this user object constructed from this user JSON right here, here, and here. And now we have the first uh, parameter for this tweet call, which is this, this user guy right here. And what is this message guy? So it's this down here. And to get it, we just access it out of the tweets object with a message equals tweet JSON right there, access the message property. And now here we just need to get the non-optional string value with string value uh, right there. Let's say message is that. And then we can just print out perhaps uh, the tweet dot user dot username perhaps. And then this should print out the very first username, which is at Captain America. And if this doesn't work, we definitely know that something is wrong or something is uh, occurring that we don't want. So down there, we get Captain America at the very bottom. So everything seems like it's working. So let's move on. I want to remove this break from the for loop. And now I want to gather all of these tweet objects inside of a separate array. And so the reason why I am doing that is because I no longer want the manual construction of these tweets like that. I want everything to be coming from this home feed call. So that means I need to remove this construction and construct everything inside of this uh, inside of this initializer. So if you click this, it tells you that self.tweets is not initialized. So the way to do that is to do something very similar to what we did for the users. Uh, I'm going to say var tweets equals some kind of empty tweet array like that. At the very bottom, we'll just perhaps get rid of the print and say tweets.append uh, an individual tweet that is constructed on line 46. And then down here, perhaps under that, we'll say self.tweets equals this tweets guy right here. So running this, what would you expect to happen? Well, now that we have the users and tweets object, what's going to be rendered inside of our list is uh, are the users on top. And then each one of these tweet messages are now being rendered out inside of the cell on the uh, the message string is right here, and then the user is right there. So you see keep calm and call it Jarvis. So similar to what we have here, obviously the image is missing and the sizing is incorrect, but we'll fix that a little bit later on. Um, what I want to show you how to fix here is the code duplication that we've introduced inside of the JSON construction of the user guy right here, or right here rather. And the way to kind of get rid of the, uh, the redundancy here is to introduce a constructor for the user object that just takes in a JSON guy like this. So let's see, how do we do this is to go to the user object and I'll introduce a new constructor of, let's see, this, and we'll say JSON and this big JSON guy like that. And then we have to construct uh, the properties out from this JSON. So hopefully you guys kind of see what's going on. I need to import this Swifty JSON to access this JSON object. And now it says that we're missing these uh, properties being initialized from this initializer. So what we need is self.name equals JSON, perhaps name like that. And we need the non-optional string value from it like that. And so let me just construct the rest of these guys with username, uh, string value, and then we'll say self.bio text equals JSON uh, bio. I think it's just bio in the, uh, the case of what is inside of this object. You see bio is not bio text. And then finally, for the profile image, which is uh, self.profile image equals, I'm going to construct a blank empty image like that. 
All right, so we have this profile image URL, which we will perhaps use later on. Okay, so now that we have this constructor, what this means is we can easily construct it from a JSON object. And that looks like this. So this constructor is no longer usable. So you see this user JSON array, we can use that now and just say like user equals user. And uh, let me just build my project. And we need JSON like that and perhaps just pass in user JSON like so. And so comment that out. And now user is being constructed correctly. So if I just build that, uh, all of this is okay now. And then I need to do the same thing up here. So let user, let me just copy that and try to put that perhaps down here. And uh, because all of the parameters and all the variables that I've named kind of just match exactly what's inside of these for loops, uh, all of this stuff just works kind of magically. So having replaced the code with just this single constructor, uh, the app will still render the exact same thing which is the list of users up here. And then we have the tweets down here. And with that being set up properly, I can delete all of those lines, which just gives us two lines up here. And uh, also, let's see this right here. Let me remove those comments, remove the printing of the tweet, which gives us that. And then we have this, and that's what we have right now. Okay. So moving on, what do we want to do to further clean up the parsing of the JSON? Well, instead of using this loop, let's see, what's the easier way to fix this? Instead of using this loop right here, what, can, what I can do is use a map function to construct this user's array that we're appending to this guy. So I really want to get rid of that array up there because we don't really need it if we construct it this way instead. So let me just show you how it's done. Uh, Self.users equals this array guy right here. So this array, I don't really want to call it just plain old array. I just want to call it user JSON array, perhaps users JSON array. That's what it really needs to be. And uh, I'll replace this with a map function like that. So we still need to unwrap it. And the map function, what we need to give it is a brace brace and just return perhaps uh, user and then this JSON constructor with dollar zero and that's exactly what we need so let me comment that out and we can also comment that out right here because self.user is being is being constructed up here instead let's run this just to make sure everything works out and it should be fine I'm like a hundred percent confident that it's fine so let's remove this and everything's there and there remove that array we don't need that anymore so that's what we get, right? So the way this works is a uh, map returns an array of stuff. And the stuff is basically uh, everything that's being constructed inside of the brace. And basically we're just constructing a user with a JSON object. And this dollar zero represents the uh, JSON object inside of this array as you sort of iterate through it. So that's how that works. If you want to get rid of the return, you can get rid of it as well. Everything works out just fine without the return. If you want to get rid of these parentheses, you can do that as well. And you end up with something that is a lot less coding, I guess. Uh, it might not appear as readable, but we have this uh, syntax nonetheless. All right, so that's how you construct this user's array. How can we use this, uh, this kind of technique to our advantage in creating the tweets array as well? So. The way to do this is also very, very similar. Um, I first want to introduce a constructor for my tweet guy because I don't really like passing these two objects inside of the tweet. We can go to the tweet and I will construct this constructor. <laughs> so in it uh, looks like that, JSON and this JSON. And then I'll say uh, self.user equals something, right? I actually want to import Swifty JSON first like that, and then uh, now this guy is available to me. Uh, this is actually something like let user JSON equals JSON. I'll access the user guy out of that. And then I'll say let user equals user JSON of this JSON right here. It gives me the user 
and then let's see I can just say self dot user equals that and then self dot message equals JSON of message so basically it's very similar to how the user is being constructed now this needs a string value at the very end to get a non optional string value that's kind of what I'm doing I think this needs to be user JSON so that should be okay now that we have this constructor let me build my project go back to this call right here and this call is now uh, this constructor is now kind of obsolete what I really need is uh, this right here so let me comment all this out and I can just say let tweets uh, da, 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 it goes tweet like this and it's this now it just takes in this JSON of tweet JSON from the actual iteration of this array so that's the advantage that I get I can now remove this line so that renders and builds and uh, runs inside of the simulator which renders out this up here and the same tweets list down below so let's see how do I now reduce this to a one simple map call so let's just do this right here let me just say let's see get rid of this guy let's see comment out this comment out that and then comment out that I can just do it in one call self dot tweets equals a uh, tweets JSON array so I'm just looking at this right here unwrap it call map and then let's see map with this two brace uh, tweets JSON dollar sign zero I uh, should be good to go all right that runs okay or that builds okay rather and we're gonna run it right now removing all of these comments let's see comments right there backspace out of that all right so that's going to wrap up for today's video really hope you guys learned how to properly parse out your json objects and a refactor your code to keep it really clean by using a simple map function to construct all of your json arrays uh, remember the source code for today's project is available down below in the description and also make sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already in the next video we're going to go through how to fix the profile images and also the sizing of our tweet cells and that's going to be it for me keep on coding guys and i'll see you in the next video bye bye guys